Welcome to Chi Talk. My name is Ellie Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. I helped heal many people from chronic health condition using technologies, ancient technologies of uh, that based in traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, and this talk is about it's it's about awakening your healer within you, and it's about uh, giving tools and resources for self healing, for self empowerment. And I'm very excited to, uh, I think I launched this talk about a year or two years ago and um, really, really excited to have this, uh, this uh, venue to be able to kind of talk a little bit about what's behind the scene of, of the Qigong practice, of, of the way I teach at least. So uh, welcome to Qi Talk and this, uh, this uh, talk is gonna be transcribed into the, uh, podcast called Awaken the Healer Within. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about how to change the way we respond to life circumstances, to life in general, and how to create a real shift in your life. And uh, uh, this is all starting from uh, a practice that was very dear to me. The way I studied Qigong when I started on my practice of Qigong was with the teacher that um, put a lot of emphasis on on the the nei gong part of the practice and i'll i'll share with you a little bit about it uh in fact we hardly moved <laughs> there was hardly movement it was all working with mind states and i was very very powerful i was able to shift a lot of things in my life during this practice and um and the way i teach now is a little different than the way i studied in the beginning and there's reason for that too but that's for another talk I wanted to start. <laughs> I wanted to start with a little bit of a, of a, a ceremony, a meditation ceremony, before we dive delve into this practice, and I'll share with you a little bit about different concept in Chinese medicine as well. So good to see you all, and um, and let's uh, let's start by just coming into the body, and closing the eyes, taking a few deep breaths. As you come into the when when I say come into the body, where do you go? Are you just feeling your torso area, or your legs, or what does it mean to you come into your body when you close your eyes and you're in your body? Let's take a few deep breaths to this. Exhale from the mouth. Inhale from the nose. And when you exhale from the mouth, let's make a, a kind of a little sound. It's a, like a whisper sound, like. Like the like H. And when you say when you exhale from the mouth all the way out, all the way out there's no more air inside and take it again from the nose let's do three time cleansing breath when all the air goes out Notice the form and shape of your body. Notice any physical sensation in your body. Notice the feet touching on the floor, the sit bones on the chair, the shoulders, and see if you can give way to gravity, meaning relaxing and sinking down. Notice if there's any physical tension anywhere in the body and softening it, giving way to gravity. So gravity is yin force, is the energy of the earth. When we are relaxing and aligning ourselves with the earth force, we're relaxing our body, we're coming into more of a yin state. And then we have also yang. So let's suspend the crown of the head towards the ceiling of the sky. That brings a sense of uprightness, of composure. 
Now really we're sitting between yin and yang, between heaven and earth. Relaxation of the earth, and the erection of the spine. And go into just normal breathing now. And let's bring to heart an experience that we are grateful for. It could be something that happened this morning, or it could be something that happened 20 years ago. Some experience that was so good that we'd like to revisit with it and give it give it gratitude and appreciate that moment. And when you feel it, that moment, that experience, that memory, try to live it. How was it? What was it? How did you feel? What was special about it? And from here, let's project one thing into the future, something that we'd like to see ourselves in the future. How would you like to see yourself six months from now in a certain topic? Could be relationship, could be career, could be anything. Something that calling you, something that pops into your head. And feel it. Yeah, feel that. How would it be? Relate to the future kind of in the same way you related to the past. You felt it. What you felt that you gave gratitude. How do you feel the future? What would it feel like? That future that you see for yourself? So let's open the eyes. All right, beautiful. And we have more people join us. Dan, good to see you. Edward, good to see you. Sharon, good to see you. Nice. Wow, what a beautiful group. All right. <laughs> so let's start this topic, this topic of, um, of how to change the course of our, our, our mind, the course of our life, uh, how, to, uh, how to change the future. Uh, in, in Taoist I, idea and Qigong, we say that you're actually manifesting all the time. You're creating the future all the time, 24 seven. So every minute, every second, you're creating the, the, the future. Now, the thing is that we know that we are creating the same future. Oh, somebody's saying the sound is bad. Um, everybody can hear me okay, or everybody's agreeing that the sound is bad. Bart, maybe, uh, all right, maybe watch your uh, connection uh, and see if you can fix it. Uh, so <clears throat> we are, we are uh, you know, thank, thank God we have the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is actually uh, determining our life. Uh, are the way we do things 96% of the time. So 96% of our life is on autopilot. And it's good, it's good, because otherwise we would have had to learn how to drive or how to bicycle every time we got on the bike or got into the car and want to drive. So we have the subconscious mind that is really uh, most of your life. Uh, if you think about it, taking the toothbrush, brushing your teeth, you know how to do it. You don't have to learn it every time again. But the thing is that you also repeat the same thoughts, the same emotion, the same things that you are. Uh, so you're manifesting all the time based on past experience. So 96%, even more than 96 if you think about it, 
we're going on autopilot most of the time. And so this is uh, this is a good thing. It's a blessing because otherwise we would have had to uh, learn how to do things every day like a child, like a toddler. But at the same time, that inhibits us from growth. And where growth is happening, where when change is happening, usually Taoist uh, thought in the I Ching, the book of changes, we say usually it's a very traumatic, something very, uh, an experience very strong that shifts your energy. Like, um, yes, yeah, so you have your own, your own psyche, your own things that you do things. And then uh, a, a really strong experience like COVID, like the pandemic, some people took it so hard that it actually changes something in their life, some perspective. So sometimes, uh, traumas like that, good traumas, bad traumas can actually rivet, shift you and really create a, a, a change, a change in your outlook, a change that you see, how you see things, or you're just starting to, and, and this, is, this is how usually change happen. It happens uh, involuntarily. Uh, we don't choose it. And in Qigong, we say, well, how can we do it? How can we choose it? How can we choose? How can we change the course of our life? And this is, uh, this is a whole practice, it's called Nei Dan, or uh, Nei Gong practice. Yeah, Nei Dan, Dan is elixir, it's, it's a way to elicit uh, from, from the inside an energy. And usually there's a certain ways that you can shift, um, shift your life, shift, uh, shift things that you do, or grow in a certain direction that you want to grow. Otherwise, we see people again and again, um, doing the same thing. People get divorced from a husband and they, they get the new boyfriend and it's actually kind of like the husband. There's, <laughs> there's all, we, we kind of manifesting the same thing we manifested before. The same jobs, the same issues, the same problems, the same train of thought. So how can we change from this course of, of mind and how can, we, how can we shift? And this is really, uh, uh, and the Taoists believe in the idea of Wu Wei or Wu Ji which is called effortless effortlessness. So the whole concept in the West about motivation and really get forced in, force in the change and be motivated and always changing what you do. And uh, that, is, um, that is very slim. We say that's only 4% of your, the conscious mind is only 4%. How can we penetrate the subconscious mind? How can we, how can we convince <laughs> the subconscious mind that, hey, let's do things differently. And, uh, and this is in Qigong, uh, what we call doing it effortlessly or doing it elegantly or gracefully. So it comes with ease. It comes with ease. So, uh, and, and how do we tap into the subconscious mind is from a more of a yin perspective. So it's, it's, it's actually from, from quieting, from quieting, from going deeper, in your mind and as a practice that's called nei gong and uh the way i wanted to bring it in is that uh this is really what got me into qigong to be honest it's the practice of nei gong and not so much the movement i really love the movement and the stretches and feels really good on your body and um really i i started with my teacher almost we didn't move at all and that was kind of bothering me a little bit because we didn't move. We did. We did only. Uh, we worked only with the mind and with and with uh, only almost solely with with mind and with energy and with the heart and with emotions and things like that. But that actually all created a lot of shifts in my life, and I actually started to teach qigong. I changed a lot of the quality of my energy uh, during this during this period of time and. And that was a thank for this, thankfully for this practice. And really, this is how I started to teach. I started to teach this specific practice, which I kind of changed a little bit and did more movement to begin with, because I saw how people react to working only with the mind states and people have some difficulty. But uh, in general, so my practice today is a combination is a combination of movement or working also with the Nei Gong practice. So the Nei Gong practice, there's a certain things. Uh, it's Nei means internal. 
and why w i uh, w a i a a a i yes means external so we have ne gong and wai gong the way uh, is the external practice is what you do, what you see that we're doing with our hands with our body is something that is very uh, uh, physically noticeable and then the ne gong practice the internal practice is something that you don't see what i do with my mind it's kind of like what we did now in this meditation. Yes, yeah, so we sat and we thought about something that we're really grateful for or an experience. And then we, we uh, kind of like projected to the future, something that we want to create in the future. And really the, the, what we do in the Nagong practice and do this, kind of like what we did in this beginning meditation, but deeper and longer and repeating it at least three times a week. So, uh, so this is really uh, how all the people that I know, people that changed their life did, you know, that you, you have to, um, we have to work with, with our psyche. We have to penetrate the subconscious mind. Usually it's being done from a very calm state. So if like we have a pain somewhere in the body and we want to heal somewhere and we have a lot of tension and mental tension that projected into this area or any problem, any, any emotional problem, yeah, that we have uh, and we're dealing with, there's a lot of mental tension towards it. There's a lot of blockages because the more we dealt with it, the more we, we yeah, there's a, more contraction there and more contraction and and to relax this contraction, we had to come into a, a very relaxed state of mind, a very relaxed state of mind. And from that, from that relaxed state of mind of, of, of creation, yeah, uh, we can, we can uh, choose a belief, we can choose a thought, we can choose a new pathway that we can, we can see the future. And this is the whole practice of visualization. And we always visualize the power of visualization. We always visualize, even if you, we always actually doing it. We, even if you want to eat food, if you want to go out tonight to, for dinner, right? What do you say? You actually think, you call, you see if they have reservation, you were thinking, oh, what do I want? Indian, Thai, what kind of cuisine do I want? Where, who do I want to eat with? And then you, you are, you're imagining it, yeah and then you make it happen you do the you call you you do the work that you have to do in order to make it happen when i was an architect <clears throat> we would we would draft the buildings we would uh, uh do elevation do like perspective see how it looks from all kind of we talk with engineers the building is not there yet there's nothing physically there's nothing there we're just imagining it imagining the building and then eventually, after, after all this preparation of visualization and planning, the finally we finally building the building. And this is this is uh, so when we, we want to change courses, we want to see what thought supports it, what visual visual supports it. And if you think about the subconscious mind thinking, planning all day long, you we want to have enough time in the day to actually project what we want to do and to convince the subconscious mind that that this is uh this is really uh really good for us we want to also uh brainstorm all kinds of uh thoughts that blocking us from from doing this so and this is the purging yeah so like why are we not there we we want to see ourselves in six months somewhere and we wanted to see it six months ago, we have the new year resolution and we're not there yet. We haven't done it. Why is that? Why? Uh, so asking questions, <laughs> being curious about where we are, where, what are we afraid of or what and, and make men. So this is a whole topic, a whole work of working with your internal energy, the bringing, bringing to the surface things and visualizing the future that you want. And, and by visualizing, we're making things happen. We're making things happen by 
seeing where we want to see and being confident. And there's many, many tools. Yeah, there's mantras that you say to yourself to remember a certain. Now, why is it so relevant and what is what is connected to summer and to the heart? Why I wanted to bring it now, because the way we feel the future is the way that the future is going to be. So the felt sense is very important. And that's really the key, like to feel, to believe. If you think about the word we be believe, we believe that this is what's going to happen, or we believe that this feels good, or um, yeah, be believe is part of the heart, to believe something. And to feel, uh, if you visualize a future that you you want, you feel excited about it, you feel good in the future, in the future, that's what you're going to create. So the future is really what you feel, what you feel now, what you feel now about the future is what the future is going to be. So some people, is, um, <laughs> and so we are manifesting all kinds of things in our life. Subconsciously, we don't know. A lot of it, we don't know what we're manifesting through all kinds of pro internal processes. But the idea is to bring it to, to mindfulness, to, to, to create something new. And this is really the work that we, we, uh, we need to do in order to shift. And we need to do it regularly enough, you know, in order to, to shift and go deeper and to go into this very complex state. And from the very, very quiet space, from the yin space, we can project into the future. And that, then this is effortless. The effortless part comes from understanding that this is a yin process. This is an internal, the quiet you are, the deepest you are, the seeds that you're going to drop is going to flourish the most. So this is, um, this is kind of a very special practice to me. It's called Nei Gong. And this is part of Qigong and we are incorporating it in the classes like this morning was very powerful. <laughs> I invite you to join. Uh, but if we, we anybody wants to take that deeper, I can guide you through it also even deeper than what we do in the classes. Uh, uh, and it's part of Qigong meditation, it's part of Neigong practice. So this is, uh, this is something that I kind of like wanted to open the conversation to and and uh, open uh, it to you guys so you can like uh, ask question or or um, or share from your experience. I know some of you have a lot of experience in this type of work and this is uh, <laughs> and uh, I probably uh, uh, kind of like uh, talking and, and you already know what what you're thinking or but if you have any question or want to share I'd love to open it to to you guys and to see what you think you know what you are uh, if you have anything to contribute who wants to go hey Gail that was that was a fast hand going up there okay <laughs> yeah. Ellie I want to commend you in the work that you're doing because you mentioned the future and it's a time to dream now. We need the dreamers. And uh, I have an expression, the future creates the present against the backdrop of the past. And mm. if I may, I also want to communicate to you some of the points that you mentioned. And it comes not from a Nagong practice because I'm learning from you, but it comes from senses. We know our five senses, but there are actually seven more senses that we really need to embrace and incorporate. You spoke of two of them right now, and that is imagination and balance. And that is what you incorporate in your pra practice. But also you mentioned movement and movement is more than literally moving. It is if something is alive, has a light, a life to it, has a sense of voice to it, and a warmth and a substance. And you incorporate all of those things, which is why I am reflecting back to you that which you are. 
You are the light. You are the life. You are the warmth. You have the movement. You create the imagination and you allow us to embrace our own sense of balance. And that all speaks to the substance of who you are and the journey you're on. That's it. Oh, thank you. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the movement is very important part of the Nagong practice as well. Um, yeah, when the energy is moving, we can also move forward into the future. Um, so movement is really, really part of it. Thank you for kind of mentioning that. Uh, Dan, we you are kind of a, a guest. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> I always want to say are, something. Are you are you on the spot here? You know you don't no, have. No, I don't feel on the spot. I was just gonna say, you know, it's really cool that you were an architect because it's like, you know, our lives as they exist today have an architectural drawing, which are our beliefs and our ideas. So you know, if something's not working to, towards what you want. You know, look at that. Look at your plan and go. Well, what you know? Where did I put that wall that I really don't want that wall there? You know, or if something's there that you that's really benefiting you, it's like, oh, I need to put more of this. You know, it's like every day we get to we get to change our blueprint. I mean, you know, until you know we get all the the architects and the engineers and the planners. You know, and everybody, all those identities that we have that work for us, and it's like, oh wow, you know, what beliefs am I creating? What beliefs do I want to have? What you know. You know, it's like, wow, cool. And it does start with a vision. It starts with imagining. What is it that you want? Where do you go? You know? Beautiful. We know the power of beliefs. The imagination, and I like, I, I, I like both of you guys, Gail and Dan, you're talking about imagination has come, come from a place of dream, of joy, of, of uh, daydreaming, of, uh, of kind of a childlike. And this is really the quality of the heart. And we say that the heart is your is putting his signature energy on all your energy, so the the uh, the heart opens and the the the, dream, the dreamers yeah we're looking for the dreamer and this is very important. You can visualize things that rationally you think you should have, <laughs> or you can visualize things that like from a place of a dream, and that's really where what we're talking about. And, and that's where the heart opens. That's when you feel the future. That's when you are excited about it. That's when you're inspiring about it. And this is where you create it and how you create your future. And it's almost doing... like, are you subject to your own indoctrination? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we look at indoctrination as coming from other people, but sometimes we do have our own indoctrinations. Oh yeah, that's true. Yes. And 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 this is how this is kind of like the 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 work that we have to do yeah and <laughs> uh in qigong in the in the in this uh, type of uh, qigong the nei gong that i've learned is more emphasis on daydreaming visualizing and keep visualizing uh than than going and uh raising up like the issues that, that what we already created uh, uh but if things rise up then we deal with them yeah if we can talk to the subconscious mind and and see what what's blocked what what where is the blockage where is the wall that we want to remove yeah then we know it yeah so it's 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 interesting yes the, it, it, our self indoctrination i know dan you're i know that i know <laughs> part of the work that you're doing and it's it's beautiful yeah uh, and I love it. And uh, yeah, uh, it's very powerful practice, both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all, I mean, it's, it's, you know, anytime anybody is moving towards, you know, bettering the world, it's a beautiful practice. Yes. You know, it doesn't matter what, what the uh, modality it's, it all moves it towards the direction that we would like to see it go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Good. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, Edward, go ahead. So I, I just want to, first of all, Gail, thank you for what you said. That was very powerful in your acknowledgement. Dan, you know, so to, to make, I can go on for 48 hours on this. <laughs> <laughs> to, to just say that everything you said really works. And in the context of that, about a month ago, you know, I hike all the time with my friends, and one of my friends got a cane, a metal cane, 
on the internet. I said, oh, gee, every time I go to Europe, I see these great hand carved, you know, wooden canes, but I don't want to carry them home. They're six foot, you know, long. I got to, you know, where am I going to put it in the overhead bin? You know, and I just make a, a story about it. But I was out of that story. The negative was not there. And I said, oh, Dave, I think I'm going to go see if I get on the internet, if I can find this uh, cane that I always see all the time. So the other day I went over to Nugget to get some sushi in the back and I walked to the cash register and what's there? <laughs> the exact hand. So you can create anything you want in your life. And it's, it, I can go through a whole thing about it and what really works in the universe. But this is the truth. And this is incredible. And there's no way that there will be a box of two dozen hand carved wooden canes at the checkout counter at Nugget. There just ain't no way it was going to happen. It wasn't in my mind anymore. I didn't think about it. I wasn't sitting at the computer to Google canes. But this is what happens in my life. And what I've gotten in my journey and what I've learned from others is how your word creates your world mm -hmm. and what you say. And now with all the negativity, if you keep repeating that crap, <laughs> that's, that's what, what shows up. And when we got the lockdown and I travel, you know, two months a year, walk the world, you know what I said? I'm not supposed to be traveling. I'm supposed to be home. And when you really get, you have exactly what you want and build from there and go on to everything you said. Gail said, movement, visualization, balance. When you go on to all of that, when you wake up every day and it's a new day and what's the day I want to create, I can creep out of bed with a pain or an ache or I can jump out of bed and nothing hurts and do my Qigong, you know, so, and, and Dan said it too, you, you're still the architect. What you're building <laughs> is, a little, is bigger and better, <laughs> you know. Man, mm -hmm. got it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, very you know, powerful. Wow. So watch your word, and if you keep repeating the crap, mm -hmm. the news, instead of being a space for transformation, and say it the way you want it, visualize it the way you want it. So I'll cut it here, but I could go on. And Beautiful. just remember, I, it I, works. <laughs> Everything you said works. <laughs> That's great, Edward. I love it. I love it. And I love that you or, uh, you added the, 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 the word to it, that adding what you talk and how you speak, how you speak to other people, how you speak with your partner and how you and be, bring mindfulness. In. And the work is really, uh, you know, beyond the Neigong that we're doing, beyond the Qigong that we're doing. Is, is being mindful of how, what we think, of how we talk, of what we see, um, and, and being mindful of it and changing it. So noticing it and changing it. And Sarah, and what you talked about, things showing up in your life, that's, that's beautiful. That's, what's, that's, that's how we create. Yep. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So many years ago, uh, some of my clients bought me a book, John Cabot Zen about mindful parenting, everyday blessings is the name of the book. And they said, this is everything you tell us all the time. And here's the thing you got to do is never, never a negative word to a child. And we're all children. And especially to yourself. Accent the positive, say it positively, step back from the words you said negatively, step back from that reaction and just stay in positive. I, I, in, I say thank God and miracle all day long. Oh, I got home safely from driving. Thank God, miracle. This was good. Oh, look at this meal. I really, this is fun. Thank God, miracle. Just keep saying it. You know what shows up in my life all day? Thank you. Miracle. <laughs> love it love it love it edward thank you so much for uh for contributing so much and all of you gail thank you so much and dan this uh let's keep it uh in our time uh kind of constraint of the chi talk 
thank you so much for tapping into this. This is just kind of like a beginning of a big, big pro project and a topic. And I've done workshops on it, um, especially the emotional resilience workshop would be the most, the closest to how this protocol uh, is going and all the things like that. I hope this was inspiring to you, to everybody to listen to this podcast. I know a lot of people do listen to it. And so uh, so I, I also wanted to tell you, Edward, Gail, you know, people are listening to it. People are getting inspiring. By it, so thank you for your contribution. <laughs> All right. So let, let's close it with a little bit of mindfulness. <laughs> so let's close the eye instead of thinking about. Uh, so thinking, just closing that and coming back into the body, uh, coming into your body feeling the form and shape of your body as you sit here now. Coming into the heart center and from the heart center, connecting with the horizon on all sides, the expansiveness of the possibility. Yeah, the, the heart connects to the horizon. Why is that? Because the, this is the middle Dantian the middle energy center between the brain and the, the lower Dantian. And it's the center between earth and heaven. And where earth and heaven meet, it, the, that's the, uh, it's the horizon. So connect with the meeting of both. And we can create everything from this space, from the heart. So we're opening to the horizon on all sides behind you, on both sides of you, in front of you and expand your heart to this infinity space and feel the nourishment and nourish yourself with the energy all around you. And from that, that, from that big space and even beyond the horizon, from that big space, from that expanded state, we connect with a sense of gratitude to whatever comes to heart right now whatever you're grateful for. And what you took from this talk. Maybe a commitment to a, a short morning practice too. And from that space, let's again see the future that we see for ourselves. Whatever topic you choose to relationship, career, or whatever it is, and dream it. And feel it in your body. Oh, we have to come into the felt sense and feel it. Feel the ecstaticness about the future, the excitement about the future, about that specific future. What do you see? What do you feel? Where do you live? Who do you meet? What is different? How do you talk to people? And let's bring it to the present moment by starting from here what we projected out. Let's bring the hands to the heart. Smile to the heart. Nice and open the hands, open the eyes. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It's really a pleasure. Thank you for tapping in. So uh, uh, I'll see you next time. In in a in a we have a class tomorrow night. Good night, Qigong, and we have uh, uh, a class on Thursday. So come join me, and I'll we'll go together. We're actually doing a really nice practice on the noon class on Thursday, a, a really nice Nagong Nagong practice. So hopefully I'll see you there. Bye everybody. Thank.